Hi, everybody. Hello there. Jerry. And Linda. And Gizmo. We're the Village's Newcomers, and today have we got a show for you. So often we get emails and texts and uh, comments about snowbirds, and today we've rounded up a couple, and they're just about to head north. We're going to tell you all about them. So without further ado, let's welcome Wayne and Brenda. Thank you guys so much for being with us today. Thank you for having us. Yeah, we're glad to be here. Glad now, we could help. Do you mind telling the folks at home a little bit about where you come from and how you got to the villages? Yeah, so a couple of years ago, we actually did a lifestyle stay here. It actually be three years in June, and we saw an ad in the paper. Not an ad in the paper. We saw a television, uh, television commercial. commercial. And so we made a reservation to come down and do a four-day lifestyle stay, and we fell in love with the place. So we went back home and we started making our plans of when were we going to make this our retirement home. And then we came back uh, three years later and um, came actually looking for a home and uh, found it quite by accident. We had set up some private showings, but we found that it had just got on the market. So we were very blessed to be able to get in and see it, put an offer in right away, and it was accepted. So we moved down then. Um, the following, that summer, so we bought it last February, and we moved down with COVID and everything. Um, we didn't move out, down until September. And you still work? I do. I do. Um, I'm a sales manager, um, so I'm still working full time. I do try to get in some fun uh, events uh, in my um, lunch times or after work, so that's always kind of a challenge to fit all of that in, but. I'm uh, making it work. Um, our company is really big on balanced lifestyle, so they really feel it's important for us to be able to take the time that we need for health and wellness. Jerry, do you mind if I ask my question, my wife a question? Sure. When are you going to retire, babe? I don't know. Okay. I love doing what I do. Okay. So. Just wanted to know. <laughs> yeah, and it's 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 I've got 32 years in, so it's really hard to give that up. Well, that leads us right into the next question. Do you ever want to be full-time down here? Well, I don't think so. Um, we've talked about maybe if our health declines, we'll stop making the trips back and forth. This will be our first trip back up north. Yeah. Um, we came down here, like Brenda said, in September. Um, our three boys live in Wisconsin, uh, all yeah. close to where we came from. No girlfriends or wives or grandchildren yet, but they're kind of a draw. Um, especially for Brenda. So I think we'll keep going back up north yeah. for the foreseeable future. That's really our home base. Um, we had three homes for a while and we sold our family home in um, June and moved out in August. So it was it was knowing that our lake home was going to be home base was important for us, especially with our three sons in their 20s and really not having significant others yet or families. Um, it's important for us to get back there. And um, we look forward to the beautiful summers there on the lake. Do a lot of fishing. We plan on doing some golfing and reconnecting with old friends. So it, it's going to be two different lifestyles. We absolutely love it down here. And I feel like I'm probably going to be a little bored going back north. That is one of our concerns is are we going to come down a little bit earlier than we planned? We might. We might change we'll things around. Out. Actually, it's really hard to know until we experience our first summer up there. We have a mm -hmm. comparison now. And we have kept super busy between you know, different activities that we're involved in here and all the friends that we've met have been amazing. So having said that, I, I don't know how long I can handle up at the lake. It will be beautiful and fun and, and different, but we may come down first part of October possibly. Um, if not that's earlier. <laughs> still up for debate. Okay, so let me get this straight. A lake, fishing, golfing, cool weather, in the summer. Mm -hmm. How many bedrooms do you have? We have two. Two bedrooms. <laughs> Were you hinting we're going to come up the there? <laughs> <laughs> we have a huge rack room, so we have lots of pullouts. And yes. We have the ability to, to sleep Yes, and quite if, a few. And if so. Jerry and Linda are ever in the area, <laughs> they're, welcome. they're welcome to stop by for as long as they'd like to. Always. <laughs> you guys at home, I'm, I'm sort of kidding, but... I refer to these two as the not snowbirds, but snow chicks, yeah. <laughs> because they are like two energizer bunnies. They're always on the go, and she has a million activities, and and he's a a, a really good golfer, and they're always doing things. So, do you mind? Can you kind of outline a typical week for our viewers? Uh, yes. 
So we have had the privilege, actually, of getting to know Jerry and Linda through their bocce group. Mm -hmm. So that's really kind of how we entrenched ourselves and got to know more people. Um, We have found ourselves golfing from three to four times a week. And their evening time frames, uh, weekends, um, Wayne joined a bowling league. So he bowls on Thursday afternoons, which Mm -hmm. is fun. And us, um, us gals do our own thing then when they, when they bowl. So that's kind of fun to get to know some of the wives from those couples. And then um, we also have um, really kind of dipped our toe in the pickleball. And so we pickleball occasionally when we, when we get time. Um, what else do we do? Well, a lot of it is we will get a text or a phone call <laughs> or run into somebody at the pool. And we yeah. end up doing something we hadn't planned on doing that day. In fact, just last weekend, Brenda and I made a pact with ourselves on Thursday yeah. that if we got a text, if we got a phone call, if we saw anybody and they asked what we're doing that night, do you want to go out? We were going to say no, but that lasted a whole day. So it did. A lot of, and that's <laughs> that's part of what the what the villages is about is you make those friends. Like Brenda said, we made a lot of friends through Jerry and Linda. Yes. And we've. We've really made some really good friendships, and mm-hmm. it's fun to go out with these people. They're, the people down here that we've met want to be here. They choose to be happy, yeah. and they just have a good time, and we like to be around people like that. Yeah, I think it's almost like college, but you have some money. So you get a chance to go to the squares. There's entertainment every night, different types of entertainment, mm-hmm. um, a lot of line dancing going on. In fact, I was supposed to do my first line dancing class this afternoon, and it, it um, work. Uh, got in the way. So that was a priority, but I plan on doing that. Um, I try to get to to the pool every day to do water aerobic. That's important for me. Mm -hmm. Um, There's tons of classes with yoga and stretch fitness and um, water volleyball, beach volleyball. Um, I mean, you name it, you can do it here. So we're really trying to balance, um, you know, we work out at the fitness centers. We try to get out uh, to the fitness center to work out occasionally, but, <laughs> not as often. But to be honest, there's more of us than when we came down here. So There is, yeah, well, <laughs> we have really um, enjoyed the lifestyle of being active. Mm-hmm. And that might mean going to the squares, hanging out, shopping, going to the market on uh, Saturdays yeah. and getting fresh produce. Um, we love to have visitors down, so we look forward to having family come by. Um, it's just, it's more than I ever experienced. And when we came down here and did the, did the lifestyle stay, I felt like it was a Disney sort of experience. And anybody that's been to Disney World can appreciate the beauty and how well it is thought out, um, the whole the whole area, and continually developing and changing and I feel that's really what the villages has done. Um, they've kind of modeled themselves after a Disney, and we feel like we're at a resort every day. That we're on vacation, even mm-hmm. though I'm working. So right. um, we've really got the best of both worlds to be able to be here in the winter, uh, enjoy the wonderful weather, and be able to go back to our lake property in the summer and enjoy family there and the cooler temperatures and mm-hmm. some fishing and um, fun things there. Well, it sounds like. I take more naps than you guys. <laughs> naps are way underrated, though. Yeah, I, I take, can't one, every, I can't I take nap. one every now and then. <laughs> I don't nap. <laughs> All right. We don't want to get into too great a detail, but can you tell people that may be toying with the idea of snowbirding, mm-hmm. how have you found the budget? Is it pretty much what you thought? Is it more than you thought, less? And kind of compare, you know, things back home to things here. I'm actually going to let Wayne take that. Um, I'm, I'm he's my numbers guy. guy. He's my <laughs> spreadsheet guy. Um, so I would say where we have blown the budget out mm-hmm. of the water is with golf and with yeah. dining and entertainment. I would say we're probably spending a hundred percent more than what we had planned on spending. We have no problems with that. That's right. just a fact. We're not complaining about it. Um, we're gladly paying the money, but that's where we've been over budget. I would say under budget, electricity, just the, the, the normal bills that come with owning a house are a lot less yep. than what they are up north. Um, we do have to pay when we're gone for someone to come and fertilize and mow our lawn. That's kind of expensive. We have a uh, house watch, a couple ladies that come in and do that for us. Um, but other, other than that, overall, we had budgeted for those. We knew what they were going to be, but it's it's the dining and entertainment and the golf that we're way over budget. Yeah, we have a hard time saying no. 
<laughs> so you could be gone all day, every day here, honestly. And you could choose to be home as much as you want to be home. We just choose to be out. Yeah. So um, with that, we've just decided that being able to golf when it wants to be in additional leagues, and I'm like fine with that. That's perfect. Um, the championship courses, you do pay a little more to play. Executives are free. So if you're really concerned about a budget here, you could play more executive golf. So that's always something to think about. Um, I will have to say, even eating out here, there's a ton of coupons and specials and mm -hmm. things that you can really happy look hours. for. Happy hours. So <laughs> we're probably not as good at that as we should be. And we maybe will be become better at knowing who, who has the better specials. But right now we're just... Um, we're just the newbies um, out to have fun. So <laughs> we're enjoying every minute of it, mm -hmm. actually. So. Well, that's great. And, you know, we kind of came to the realization we're 65. How many good years do we have left? That's right. So we're going to enjoy it, too. Now, we don't, we don't spend as much money eating out probably as you guys do. But do you feel like that you're kind of trying to grab the gusto while you're down here? When you go back to Wisconsin, you won't be spending as much money. Ab ab oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. We'll, we'll probably join a country club up there to be able to golf. Um, but I would say eating out, yeah, we won't necessarily spend that kind of money eating out and, yeah. and happy hours and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, once when we're here, we want, we want to be with our friends. We want to do things socially. So that that kind of comes with the package. So yeah. we're not complaining. We love it. Um, but it is something that we didn't totally budget for, knowing how much you were going to golf and how yeah. much we were going to be out. <laughs> what I tell people is we've gone out to eat more since we've been here since last September than we had in our entire lives <laughs> up to that point. And I'm not exaggerating. So yeah. there'll be a lot less of that when we go up north. Yeah. But we have just made some really dear friends here mm -hmm. that um, when they call, we don't want to say no. And I think a lot of people can put themselves in our positions when they're new, especially. Um, I ran into somebody at the pool when we were first here that said, and I asked him, how long does this go on? You feel like you're at a resort every day, you're on vacation. And he goes, I've been here four years and it still feels like I'm on vacation. So I don't know. We might have to reallocate <laughs> to our spreadsheet. But um, it's, it's been really a joy mm -hmm. and um, amazing down here. It's really kind of a best kept secret. Well, other than the expenses, I, I kind of feel like you're in a no-lose situation because you bought a house in a good neighborhood. You bought a nice house. It's doing nothing but going up in value. So when this experiment's over, you're just going to cash that in and head, and go back up north. I don't know. <laughs> we, don't really, we, are, Jerry. we don't really like the winners up there. So I, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say. I don't know. Well, I would say you know, if... if we had to choose between the two mm -hmm. and make one of them a permanent residence, we would make this the permanent residence. We moved yeah. down here because the older I got, the older Brenda got, the more we hated the snow and the cold. We just got to the point where I just didn't enjoy it. Yeah. Especially yeah. when we were working. You go to work in the morning and it's dark. You come yeah. out and you have to shovel off your car and then you go home in the dark and you got to blow the driveway off. We just got tired of that. Yeah. We just love the warmth. Getting outside every yeah. single day and seeing the sun every day is being wonderful. able to bike ride, go for a walk. They have beautiful preserves here to walk, do boardwalks, mm -hmm. and see the birds and the life and the um, just the environment. Um, I was really blessed that I was able to work remotely, mm -hmm. and I know a lot of people through COVID are experiencing that, and it allows people to work from wherever they are. Yeah. So I was able to actually extend my work, um, you know, career a little further down the road than maybe I was expecting to. Um, but it's, it's been nice. It's been, it's been enjoyable. Uh, I love what I do mm -hmm. and, um, without giving away what I do, a lot of people will know, uh, why I love it so much, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's enabled us to have the lifestyle that we have yep. and I'll continue to do that as long as I can. I asked that question, not really in regards to you, but a lot of people are afraid to take on that second home and it's like an investment. Mm -hmm. You're not really losing money when you buy a second home, you're putting it into the home. And as long as property values increase, you someday can get that money back. So you still are going to have expenses for food and transportation and eating out and presents and insurance mm -hmm. wherever you live. But you're going to have a little more with that second home. So if you could handle those the expenses, you know, it may not be a bad investment. 
Right. And we've budgeted for all of that. You know, the additional insurance on this house down here, car insurance or golf car insurance down here, those types of things. We've budgeted Mm -hmm. for those. I mean, we put a lot of thought into this coming down here and we met with our financial planner multiple times. Everything numbers wise seemed to work out. So we're real comfortable with that. There are extra expenses like you just talked about, Jerry, but we... Well, we're blessed we can handle those. Yeah, one thing we didn't really think about was how expensive a golf cart can be here. <laughs> um, we had a really fun time shopping for our golf cart, a brand new one, and we got some of the bells and whistles that I'm really glad we got on it, but it's expensive. Mm-hmm. So that's something you would want to consider when you come down here is you're going to need that mode of transportation. It's how people get around. Uh, I think there's over 110 miles of intermodal path for your golf cart. So having said that, you definitely want a comfortable cart. And, um, you know, that's just something that we went out and really got what we liked. We splurged so a little bit. We did. We did. And we badgered it up a lot with Wisconsin <laughs> stuff. Yep. And Iowa so, State. <clears throat> and a little Iowa State. Yep. Yep. And I just want to give Wayne a little salute here because he's obviously intelligent. He chose to retire and allow his wife to keep working. Oh. You know, that I makes the plan know. work. Going back to about five minutes ago in this little interview, she did say that she's going to work for the as long as she can still work. And she also said, I can join as many golf leagues as I want to. So I just want to make sure that <laughs> that is on the record. It is on the record. <laughs> we'd, have to, we'd have to talk more about that in depth. Yeah. Exactly. We don't want it to cut into our fun time together. But yeah. it's really important down here because when Wayne retired, I was still working. So I had that and, and still am working. Had that to keep me busy. I know a lot of couples come here retired and they see each other a lot, and it can it can be really kind of a strain on your relationship. So you have to figure out a way to really have a balance. And so that might mean, you know, you do, you do your things you know, on this day, and I go here and do that, and then you come back and do fun things at night. But, you know, you find you have your own lifestyles, too, that you want to do things. I do things with the women. He bowls with the guys. Um, we do things as couples. So it, it's finding that balance. But I think there can be a surprise when you come here and you're both retired and you're looking at each other going, now what do we do? That's a lot of each other when you're used to not having that, um, having worked. Well, we know we know that feeling. <laughs> now what do we do? Oh, no, go away for the day, please. <laughs> go take a walk. Would you please go golf today? We had both planned on retiring last March. I was fortunate enough <laughs> With my former employer, they gave me a package, and I was able to retire early. And that's the only reason. It is. It It is. And and we could make it work financially. So, um, you know, I just decided, especially since I could work remotely, um, why not? So um, it's enabled us to have some income to do some fun things around our house. Mm -hmm. Because when you buy down here, it's not exactly like you want it. There's things you want to add to it to improve and, um, you know, we had some tile on just various things that you yeah. want to do. So. Our neighbor across the street yelled at me one day. I was working on something. He said, yep, you bought one of those $400,000 fixer-uppers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, there's a little bit of truth to that. You know, the, that. the other shock is homes down here are not cheap no. um, compared to kind of what we were thinking we could afford and what we wanted to get. And it's like, well, that wasn't quite what we expected. Yeah. Um, but like Jerry said, the values continue to go up. Um, we're told eight to nine percent a year, so it's really a great investment, mm-hmm. and to be able to live this lifestyle, it's, that way. Yeah. 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 All right, let's get to the logistics. You guys are getting ready to go north. We are. Yeah. Do you have a checklist you have to do to your house before you go? Yes. We do. We thank you, Jerry and Linda, for asking us to come here because it forced yeah. us to put a, a list, a spreadsheet together. Yeah. Um, the first thing we need to do is come to an agreement as to when we're going to go out north because yep. Brenda wants to go up a little bit later. I want to go up a little bit sooner. But it'll be yeah. sometime in May, first or second week in May. And once yeah. we determine that, then we have to make some phone calls. There's services down here that we have to activate. Our house watch, our lawn mowing, mm-hmm. um, internet spectrum, um, change our addresses with the post office, have stuff forwarded. Um I'm probably going to have our golf car service before we go up. Brenda needs to change our address in at Amazon.com. That (laughs) is one. That's probably our most important thing to do. A lot of people forget that and they go to place an order and it automatically populates to go to where they were and you're like, I'm not there anymore. Yeah. So we had that problem when we came down here. We had things going to our lake home and you know that was a problem. Had to make some phone calls. We just deleted that address for a while and added our new one. So that's something that you'll want to do in a number of of items you might have that are auto populated or auto served. Um, We need to change our pharmacy for prescription prescription refills. 
So if you have something coming to a Walgreens here, yeah. obviously you want to terminate that for the time frame that you're gone or move it to where you're going. Yeah. Um, so that's just some thoughts. Um, you know. As far as up north goes, and not everybody has this issue, but we have a small lake home on a small lake. Mm -hmm. It's electric heat, so we actually shut everything down. We have a local plumber that we have to call, and he comes out and he blows out the lines, gets the waters out of the line, shuts everything off, and turns our electricity off. And then coming back up, we have to call him a couple of weeks ahead yeah, of time. Yeah, we'll just make sure everything so, is, yeah. uh, we have water when we get there, it's important. Right. And uh, that we have some heat turned on. Uh, kind of the reason why I don't know for sure when we're going is we'll watch the weather. Um, I don't want to go back and have it be 40 degrees. I do want ice off the lake. Um, and we're trying to coordinate with our sons to come up and help us get the pier and the lift in and the, and the toys and stuff. So we're kind of waiting on that. We'll know more as we get closer to that time frame. And I think we'll know when it feels right um, to close down. But, yeah, there's some of those calls, you know, like you want to stop your paper delivery. Yeah. Um, things like that that are reoccurring. Um, some, some other things that we, we put down. Um, there's documents that we want to take back with us. Medical yeah. records, passports, um, this warranty for porch windows we just had put into the house. I have some documentation for, for my mom who's, who's up there. Um, yeah, anything insurance that you files, might need that sort of thing. Checkbooks. For that six months, we yeah. have actually a, a tote or a crate that we'll put everything in and take back with us. Right. So, you know, like I said, passports, good one. Mm -hmm. um, I also have a suit and tie and shoes and a dress shirt and a belt in case, you know, we're getting older. If we have friends that are a little bit older, maybe there's a wedding, maybe there's a funeral yeah. we have to go to. Yeah. So we have to take that stuff back. You have long pants here? He has a suit. <sighs> he has one suit. <laughs> I, I must admit, special, I do have long pants here. A special here. place in the closet. Yeah. Um, you know, things to think about, too, is like your extra checkbooks. You might want to take, you know, mm -hmm. those back. Um, we're bringing our golf clubs back. We are leaving our bags here. Yeah. We have extra bags back home. It makes our trip back because we actually drive. So we want to be really lean and mean about what we take in our car. Um, there's a few of my favorite clothes Obviously, I'm going to take my curling iron, your makeup, things like that. Um, but I'm leaving a lot of my clothes here. I'm just taking some of my favorites, favorite shoes, you know, favorite things like that. So, Can I comment, comment on that? Yeah. I don't take any clothes back and forth. Really? He's a woman Nothing. either. <laughs> I've got up north and I've got down south. Clothes. He's pretty good. He's pretty so good. that hat is staying. Badger hats. <laughs> this hat, yes, I have other badger hats up north. It's a yes. lot of badger hats. <laughs> um, but things like your electronics. Think about your laptop, your cameras, iPad, your iPad, iPads, your, your yeah. speakers, your connecting devices. Those are important. Um, things that you use every day, like your disposable contact lenses, are pretty important to bring back and forth. Mm -hmm. So those are just some things too that, um, you know, medications, vitamins, stuff like that, that you maybe don't want to have to buy when you get there. Um, we'll just box up. i will have some totes that'll easily fit in our car. And um, we've already got a box started for things that go up north. I'm kind of one of those people that if I have to take some medical uh, records with me, I just put them in the box now, I know where they're at. So yeah. we do kind of plan out. Yeah, and we're gonna be able to leave wine down here and we have our wine up north. Yes. So we have friends. <clears throat> that we're going to stop by on the way up north and pick up seven or eight cases of wine that we <laughs> yes. asked to store at their we, house. So that's another group we join, <clears throat> excuse me, as a wine group. Um, we love our wine. So yes, we had, to, we had to rid it out of our cottage or our lake home because it would freeze. So our friends are babysitting our wine and yep. hopefully there's a few bottles left. But um, yeah, so that's just one of the groups that we belong to and we will not take some of that stuff back and forth, obviously. Um, some other things that we'll do um, in talking to people down here that, that basically, I'll call it summarize your home here instead of winterizing, is um, they freeze a little, a little water bottle or a, a can of, or a, a Tupperware container of water and put a penny on it and put it in your freezer. Um, we're basically going to empty our refrigerator and freezer except for like condiments and things like that. Um, we're going to load our refrigerator full of bottled water. It holds your temperature much better. And then put that little container of water in your freezer. Um, keep in mind, we're going to be gone during the hurricane season. So we're going to want to know if our refrigerator or our electricity went off for an extended amount of time. So you'll be able to know if that water has um, melted, that your electricity has been off. So that's just one of the hints that we've gotten down here. Another one I actually picked up at the pool was to add a little WD-40 to your garbage disposal. And just a little bit in there, run it for a few seconds just to lubricate it. It keeps it from rusting while you're gone. So those are just a couple, you know, um, you know, kind of tidbits of some hints that we've gotten. And I'm sure there'll be more as we make the trip back and forth. 
Um, but that's, you know, things like unplugging your, your TVs because there are um, a lot of lightning strikes down here. And with the storms that will happen, you want to protect um, your devices. Mm -hmm. We actually have um, surge protection on our house. Um, but I still want to be safe and unplug TVs and things right. like that. Now your sprinkler, your irrigation system, you're going to let that run while you're gone? Yes. yes. Yeah, it was running when we bought the house in February. Mm -hmm. And after we bought the house in April and continued to have it on. I think in the summer it goes off about three times a week. Yeah. Um, we just had patio pavers put in. And we're going to have an actually an irrigation company come out and just check everything that was moved around just yeah. to make sure everything's working. Make sure we're not properly. watering the but neighbor's yeah. yard. or yeah. We do you know. leave that on. Yeah. So the, the neighborhood watch that comes in, we actually hire two women that will walk through our house twice a month. They'll flush our toilets to make sure that, you know, they're kept relatively clean. Mm -hmm. They check for bugs. If there's, yep. you know, bugs or anything, they give us a call. We do have pest control come out. So they usually are, you know, making sure that termite protection, things like that, are applied. There is a product that RAID makes. It's an essential oil, and it can be found at Home Depot and Lowe's. And it's great to put a little bit of that on a windowsill. kind of keeps the gnats and the little bugs um, at bay, too. So there's, there's some things that we'll probably end up doing, uh, pulling some of your blinds to keep the sun out. Mm -hmm. um, we will not run our fans full time. It's really hard on ceiling fans to run them 24-7. Um, we'll then, probably knock our air, AC down. Do we turn it up bit. to about 78 when we're yeah. done? You want to keep that running just to keep the humidity out. Yep. You just don't want any mildew issues and that sort of thing from happening. So um, we will give um, a couple that's our best friends. We're going to give them a set of keys, both to our mailbox and our house. So if there's any need for them to come in or we call and say, hey, can you right. stop by the house? They have an ability to get in. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing you might want to consider too, like if you have Nest cameras, make sure they're on and positioned in places where you can watch your property when you're gone. So um, yeah, there's just a lot of things that you have to think about and, and the checklist really helps a great deal. Mm -hmm. Those are great tips. Uh, I was going to ask what you set your thermostat on while you're back in Wisconsin. Here. Oh, when we're, when we're down here and up there, what's when, it set at up there? Well, yeah. it's going to be summertime here. Yeah. 78, wasn't it? 78 here. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's what we did this past summer. It yeah. seemed to work out okay. Yeah, we had no problem. And, and actually, the neighborhood watch gals that came through would watch to see if there were our lights were on. Because I think the outdoor light was left on at one point. Yeah. So they had taken a picture and reported back. Our lawn wasn't, um, sprinkler wasn't going often enough. So they actually um, turned added, our, they added, added another, day. another day yeah. to our sprinkler cycle. Mm -hmm. So it's really good to know you have that set of eyes on your house. And now that we've got a ton of friends, we can just have them drive by and watch or right. go you know, check it out too. So I feel like we kind of have a village here, so to speak, uh, in the villages that kind of looks out for everybody. Mm -hmm. and have you made friends with your new neighbors uh, over where you live now? We have. Yeah. Um, in yeah. fact, across the street... About a month and a half ago, two, uh, a couple moved in yeah. from Minnesota, so we had a lot in common with them. We've gone out to eat with them a couple times. Yeah, they're um, sweet. At the end of our block, we're on a cul-de-sac. Mm -hmm. um, one of the ladies who lives at the end of the cul-de-sac handed out flyers about three or four weeks ago. So we have a happy hour at the end of our cul-de-sac from 4.30 to 6 every Friday. So it's another event we go to. Yeah. We, we, <laughs> because we, met our we neighbors. want to meet people. You know, yeah. we want to know who's around us. So yeah. Yeah. So we've met a, a lot of them. And you know, they're from all over the country. A lot of them didn't come back until right after the holidays. Mm -hmm. So for a while we wondered, are we going to have neighbors yeah. with the whole COVID pandemic? But they did come back the first week in January. So it was good to have um, pretty much everybody back on our block. Yeah. So. so you basically told us that when you come down here in the fall, mm -hmm. you have maintenance to do up there. Yep. And you basically shut that place down. And since it's deserted, you blow out the pipes to prevent water freezing. And then it stays that way until the threat of freezing is over. It stays um, that way until we call the plumber, the local plumber that on. will... We'll give him a two weeks head notice. Yep. Head step. Give him a two weeks notice, and uh, yeah. he will come out there and he will turn everything on. He'll turn all the water back on. He'll turn the electric electricity back on, so we can just walk right in. Yeah, everything's shut off now. Yeah. Everything's blown out. It's you know it may be warm there now, but there's no water. There's no heat yeah. um, until he we we tell him to turn it all back on. Yeah. So, since you bought your home here, what's the longest you've been away from it? 
Well, we bought it in February, the end of February, and as you all know, COVID set in. So we closed remotely in April, in April, the first week in April, and we didn't come back again until the end of August. So that was really hard to know we had this place. We were blessed to have bought a house that was turnkey. Yeah. So it already had furniture and towels mm -hmm. and sheets and dishes and everything. So we really could come down whenever we wanted, but with COVID, we didn't travel. Um, I experienced a major back surgery the end of March, so that kind of put a crimp in things. We had our family home to get on the market and sell, so we were really busy um, last summer. Yeah. And then once our home sold and our movers came, um, and we had a date that they were going to deliver down here, then we we made the trip down. We made a lot of flights last August, yeah. and then uh, we actually our movers arrived mid um, September. So we spent a week, we unloaded and basically put things away, and then we flew back to Wisconsin and closed our lake home. Mm -hmm. And then we came down permanently um, third week in September? September, yeah. I think so. And we've been down here ever since. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, uh, this has been a ton of information. Yes. And you folks that are watching this, if you're planning on being a snowbird, I know you were probably watching intently, you can go back and watch and take some notes. Mm -hmm. But she pretty much... And Wayne, he chipped in a little bit. Oh. Uh, I was expecting that. I'm in sales. I'm in sales, so I talk a lot. <laughs> no, I, no, it's been great. And I think that uh, you've got a lot of good information there to kind of get a, an idea of what it's going to be like if you decide to be a snowbird. Mm -hmm. And we really, really want to thank you guys for uh, coming and, and being with us today. Well, thank you so much for having us. Yeah, we've enjoyed it. It's been such a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully thank you. you can glean some good nuggets from our yeah. video. What a great couple. Yes, they are sweet. And they gave us a lot of good information. Yeah, I'm sure you learned a lot of things that will be helpful. And who doesn't want to be a snowbird? I mean, you live the summers yeah. up in the cool, and you come down here during the winters for the warm. It's a great thing. But like you heard, it's got its share of, I wouldn't call them problems, but things that have to be taken care of. But thanks so much to Wayne and Brenda for coming and sharing that with everybody today. Until next time. We'll see you when you get here.